So now we are in the last part of this session and we are mainly dealing with approaches to combat climate changes and how can we uh, regain agriculture production. So variation in the environment has a long lasting influence on agriculture and food security globally. Food security and safety are created by severe weather conditions and it is not a recent problem. It is, uh, there, uh, it is there since uh, 1900 or so. But formally, no consideration was adopted to tackle this problem. Therefore, to cope with these weather variations in the most urgent demand worldwide for crops to adapt to changing environmental stresses, subsequent approaches are required. So, one of the very common uh, approach to combat Climate change is the cultural methodology. Recently, some experiments reported investigation of the strategies trialed by farmers to tackle the climatic variation for plant adaptation. There are many useful approaches adopted by, by farmers themselves, including abiotic factors such as altering planting and harvesting time, collection of crops with short life cycles, crop rotation, irrigation techniques, and variation in cropping schemes. Under climatic stress conditions, all of these approaches are very beneficial for crop adaptability. Modification in sowing time, application of drought resistant cultivar, and the cultivation of new crops are some important strategy to lessen the climatic variability danger and provide better adaptability to crop plants for assuming food safety and security. Another plant adaptability approach is by means of crop management technique that have the ability to enhance crop development under various environmental stresses. The choice of sowing time, planting density, and optimum irrigation practices are crucial technique to tackle weather stresses. Fertilizers are also very vital to reduce the effect of global warming and support the plant for better adaptability. It provides substantial energy to plants and is beneficial to maintain the fertility of the soil and increase productivity. Hence the importance of fertilizer in nourishing the world is undeniable Though excess use of fertilizers are not good for environment and it can cause uh, emission of greenhouse gases as well. Then, in addition to the cultural method, we have conventional techniques as well. Under various environmental stresses, plant breeding shows dynamic techniques in crop development and betterment. It gives a way to potentially guarantee food security and safety under harsh weather variation and help plants escape from various stresses through a crucial phase of plant growth by developing stress resistant cultivar. Genetic divergence analysis is used for first for polymorphism, inbreeding, assessment, assortment and recombination to attain plant perfection and is amongst the main aspects for defining accomplished in breeding. Genetic divergence analysis is considered a very important method for development of new cultivars based on genetic distance and similarities. For genetic studies, land races are a significant source, such as wheat land race kept in data bank comprises broader genetic variants and is a valuable basis for stress resistance. Now, in addition to the two uh, previous methods that we just discussed, we have genetics and genomics strategies as well. So, omics approaches, that means uh, something which we study at genomics level, proto proteomics level or metabolomic level are called as omics level study. So uh, genomics means total content of genetic uh, material. Proteomics means total protein content of a particular cell and so on. So 
uh, when we uh, study a particular cell or a particular organism at the genome level, at the proteome level, there are certain factors which, uh, which can be um, studied in order to uh, get a climate resilient crop. Omics approaches provide beneficial resources to elucidate biological function of any genetic information for crop upgrading and development. Different molecular markers are studied in population genomics across the environment in many individuals to find out novel variation pattern and help to find if the genes have functions in significant ecological traits. So say for example, while studying the total genome or transcriptome, one might come across a gene which, which may be useful for, in order to get uh, for genetic engineering or genome editing in order to get a climate resilient crop. So genomic studies are going to be really very helpful. Uh, I'm not going into the details of this because I believe there, uh, we have a hybrid uh, participant here. I mean, we have uh, participants coming from different streams. So I will not go into the details of this, but I just want to tell you that there are proteins. We have seen there are certain antioxidants. So we can uh, work on the increase of the amount of these antioxidants by some uh, genetic engineering methods, transgenic technology, or many other techniques can be utilized for enhancement of such antioxidants so that plants are able to tolerate more of reactive oxygen species being generated. So this could be another technique. Another uh, genomics technique that is genome-wide association studies for stress tolerance. This is also a very powerful tool for understanding the complete set of genetic variants in different crop cultivars. So we have many, uh, like say for example, wheat or rice or many other crop plants. They, uh, there is a lot of uh, variation amongst their different uh, species, species and one may have one uh, beneficial uh, criteria another variety may have another. So we can kind of uh, associate these um, uh, different kind of uh, criteria that they have and we can actually map the different important uh, QTLs or genome-wide association studies can be done in order to um, study the genetic variability and important factors which are uh, present in different varieties. GWAS or genome-wide association mapping has widespread application related to biotic and abiotic stresses. It, uh, it has been applied to describe drought tolerance, soil tolerance and heat tolerance. So GWAS is another technique which can be utilized then genome selection for crop improvement is also important. Genome selection in the ex is one of the very exciting tools to revolutionize the crop improvement by using high throughput phenotyping and marker density to screen the elite germplasm. And it can be further utilized to improve polygenic traits and economically breeding line development. The next important tool is genetic engineered plants for stress tolerance. So biotechnology is an influential approach for genetic manipulation of the genome for the betterment of human being. The genetic modification through biotechnology is a powerful strategy and encouraging data is collected from genetics which can be exploited significantly to various biotic and abiotic stresses such as salinity, drought, heat and cold, Identification of stress responsive transcription factor are powerful findings to develop stress resistant crop cultivars. Transcription factors can control the phenotypes of genes in genetic engineered crops associated with various stresses. There are numerous transgenic plants which have been established by genetic engineering to tackle with biotic and abiotic stresses, Bt cotton, Bt brinzel, uh, 
for that matter transgenic maize these are very important uh, genetically engineered plants which are being used in many of the countries so similarly similar factors can be introduced into the plant which uh, which will allow to generate climate resilient crop plants now one very uh, recently uh, uh, recently developed technique that has come up is the genome editing strategy so genome editing strategy is the most powerful strategy to manipulate the plant genome by means of sequence specific nucleases genome editing for crop improvement has the remarkable ability to tackle food insecurity and develop a climate smart agriculture system globally in traditional plant breeding approaches genes are discovered to be associated with various important traits by means of mutation conventional breeding strategy which has recognized as a significant technique for the development of elite and high yielding germplasm genetic diversity of various elite varieties has been substantially decreased due to the exploitation of important crops extensively that has in various circumstances been associated with enhancement of the susceptibility to various biotic and abiotic stresses plant breeding approaches have been greatly influenced by the genetic engineering tools and exploring new strategy for fast and accurate manipulation in crop genomes to protect them against different stresses and improve crop yield thus developing the novel modification in the gene pool of various plant germplasm is required under biotic and abiotic stresses for the improvement of elite crop varieties with great inability to produce high yielding crops in genome editing technology site specific endonucleases are used comprising of zinc finger nucleases transcription activator like effector nucleases and crispr cas9 in contrast to the zens and talens that is in contrast to zinc finger nucleases and transcription activator like effector nucleases genome editing tools the crispr cas9 system is emerging as the most powerful genome editing strategy because it is economical rapid accurate and enables multiple site specific editing within the genome crispr cas9 is a modern genome editing strategy based on prokaryotic defense mechanism triggered by type 2 rna organization that offers protection to prokaryotes against attacking viruses genome editing has been modernized modernized by crispr cas9 assembly by producing candidate gene mutants and knock down single nucleotides in a genome as compared to other genome editing tools like talens zfns crispr based strategy have been tremendously exploited in plant genomes moreover it has great potential to aid crop breeding to establish high yielding and stress resistant varieties most importantly the crispr cas9 tool is converting into a comprehensible environment friendly technique for the establishment of genome edited non transgenic plants to tackle environmental extremes and guarantee food security so in that shell we can say that there is there are indications of climate change and because of this climate change plants and agriculture crops specifically are going to face more incidences of biotic and abiotic stresses therefore we need to be prepared with climate resilient crops and during this biotic and abiotic stresses there is one common feature which is observed in many type of stresses that is a generation of reactive oxygen species reactive oxygen species are generated in a, in a cell under normal conditions as well but when a cell is facing biotic or abiotic stress it is going to be produced more 
even at the sites where it was not getting produced under normal conditions and excess amount of reactive oxygen species is going to uh, degrade or is going to affect several biomolecules, important biomolecules of the cell that are proteins, DNA and lipids. So in order to survive, plant cells have developed the, a mechanism so they produce antioxidants. These antioxidants could be enzymatic or it could be non-enzymatic, which can help to scavenge these reactive oxygen species and safeguard the cells. But a cell can um, acclim acclimatize to such condition only up to an extent. If there are extremes of reactive oxygen species in a cell, it can cause programmed cell death. So, and similarly, there are many other physiological, molecular, biochemical changes which are occurring in a cell when it is under stress. So, if there are climate change, there are more incidences of biotic and abiotic stresses. So, the plant and their cells, they need to be prepared to acclimatize those stresses. And for this, human interventions are required. So the traditional method and the, um, the <clears throat> breeding method and other strategies, which is related to genomics, molecular and integrated breeding, physiology, uh, physiological methods, and many other methods can be applied because of which uh, climate resilient crop can be made ready so that we are kind of ready for if there is a ch climate change, if there, there are extremes of temperature, if there is a water scarcity, we have a variety. We have a plant, we have a crop plant which is still able to grow. Thank you.